Greetings, greetings, greetings and salutations one and all. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing on this Labor Day? Yeah, Labor Day 2021 right here in the United States. It's a night shift to DJ Kevin Stew. Invite you to call a friend, tell a friend. Community and finance night. Tonight with the sound of voice. Track called Far From Finished. Yeah, man, because we're still works in progress. Well, I know, speaking for myself, I'm definitely far from finished. I know some of you have heard me say. God put me on this earth to do certain things. Right now I'm so far behind, I'll never die. Yeah, man, I'm playing catch up though. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I want to say big up to each and everyone locked in right now. Those on tuning radio on the night shift to DJ Kevin Stew. Those healing from near and far by way of affiliates. One Harmony Radio over there in the UK. Top of the morning to you guys. Big up to those out in New York Island worldwide. How are you guys recovering from Ida passing through? I want to say big up to those in New Jersey, NIE Radio. Motivate to big up your status. Big up to those out of Texas. Logged in. Double GLRO. Home of the Donny Walker Morning Show. The people station taking from the sheets to the streets. Big up to those on Allo Up Radio and Dusik Media Groups. All representing Texas. Much love to you. Big up to those on the Foundation Radio Network, ClintonLindsay.com. You can check out Clinton Lindsay. Every day on ClintonLindsay.com. The Foundation Radio Network. It's on from midday to three. 
Sky. He's on from 11 to 3. I could be wrong. Clinton, please forgive me. You know I'm a work in progress, right? I want to say big up to those on PEMGTV.com. Of course, those who are locked in right here at the home of the night shift today, DJ Kevin Stew. KevinStew.com, where you're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Everybody on Facebook Live, how you doing? Remember, it's only a segment broadcast. Don't get too comfortable. How you doing, cuz? How are things in Jamaica today? First of all, let me go ahead and um, tell you guys that my guest for tonight will not be making it due to a family emergency. We had to postpone that meeting. But you know what they say, the show must go on, right? So we're still going on. As some would say, we're carry on. I want to say thank you to my segment sponsor, Pulsey Media Group. When being in the moment is priceless, give them a call. They take care of your videos, your photos, your streaming, your advertising. Just give them a call, 754-999-1140. And tell them that you want to see you want something like what Kevin Stew has on his website. Come on, they can hook you up with streaming any of your events, church service, funeral, wedding, seminar, party. You name it. I'm a secure platform. They have your streaming solutions. Check them out online, pulsemg.com or call them up 754-999-1140. That's 754-999-1140. Hey man, I'm so far from finished. I can't even see the finishing line. Beautiful day in, in, in Jamaica today. Beautiful sunny day. Love that. It's always good to know, you know, when when uh, when people around you that you're connected to in any which way, shape, or form, that think people around them are are good. You know, their connections are good. Good things to know, yeah. So. As we look to get going tonight, you know, <laughs> things happen. And so we're switching up tonight's community and finance just a little bit. And as I was as 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 I was looking through some information today, I came across something that I touched on um a couple of months ago, maybe. Um, greetings, thirteen twelve. How are you? Um, in the house, live and direct. Guess who? Boy, mm. you're gonna hurt me tonight with this one. Guessing games. People pop it up in the stew pot. Um, by the way. Those of you who are not familiar with the stew pot, it is what others call a chat room. You go to kevinstew.com. It is 
the where we are where we keep things interactive. We're fancy over here on KevinStew.com. So we don't call things the way how other people will call them, you know. So it's a stew pot. It's where we keep things interactive and bubbling. So come on over. You don't need to sign up, you don't need to register, you don't need to put a name. You can remain anonymous as thirteen twelve is doing that hasn't been in the stew pot for a while. I don't know. But um, I guess as we go through, we'll find out, right? 13, 12? Give us some clues as we go along. All right, so one of the things that I came across is this information about student loans. Interesting thing is that... Um, <laughs> uh, listen... All right, so student loan borrowers have had $37 million U.S. dollars in wages unfairly garnished despite COVID-related pause on collections. Now, I saw that headline and I was like, wait now, say what? We've been talking all this time about um, things related to student loans. Well, a few weeks ago, we talked about student loans and, and, and grand student grants and, and, and the cost of tuition, basically. And student loans was a big part of it. And now to see this. And you have to ask a question, okay, so what is really going on? 773-789 Stu gets you in touch. 773-789-7839. You can call, you can text, you can WhatsApp. Um boy. I have I have cables all over and I have one stuck and causing me to be immobile. Alright, one second please. This is not what you want happening on live broadcast. You don't want your dead ear. You don't want anything like that. So let me let me go back to voice as I as I clear up this little uh, snafu right here. I'm really caught in a situation. <laughs> and I'm far from Okay, now I am free. <sighs> okay, so my biggest fan, um, welcome back to my biggest fan who has not been around for a while. Uh, <laughs> I don't understand. It's my biggest fan and, and, and I haven't been getting any breeze from you. I don't know. <sighs> so, borrowers were having their wages garnered all this time 37 million dollars 37 million u.s dollars that's crazy so borrowers had have, have are still having their wages seized over defaulted student debt months after the government instructed the student loan industry to pause its activity during the coronavirus pandemic that's one conclusion from Department of Education data published on Thursday by the Student Loan, the Student Borrower Protection Center. The data released to the nonprofit advocacy group through a Freedom of Information Act request also indicate that borrowers are still are, borrowers are owed more than $37 million in wages seized between March 2020 and June 2021 that the department had instructed student loan organizations to refund. So, is it $37 million that had been collected over this period of time up until June 2021? 
Or is it that they've had the monies and up until June 2021 had been instructed to refund them? The borrowers are, are, that are the focus of the documents have commercially, fe commercially held family federal education loans or debt that was originally owed by a private lender and backed by the government. They were initially excluded from the coronavirus era pause on payment, interest, and collections. What you see here is either a willingness to just completely disregard the Department of Education, or you have an industry that is simply unable to comply with the rules. Seth Frotman, the executive director of SBPC. All right, Mr. Frotman. I'm a need for you to be a little bit clearer, just a little less vague on that statement about what we see here. In March of this year, 2021, the Biden administration said borrowers with commercially held FFEL loans who defaulted on their debt would be included in the pause and should have any wages that had been seized during the pandemic period refunded. The data released to SBPC indicate that despite those instructions, borrowers were subject to wage garnishment and, held, uh, and had not received refunds at least through June. Defaulting on a student loan can be a sign of broader financial difficulty, which means it is likely many of, uh, of these borrowers need the funds that were allegedly seized to cover their bills. Um, greetings and salutations, Carla. One moment. What you see here is either a willingness to just completely disregard the Department of Education or you have an industry that is simply unable to comply with the rules. Either way, you look, either way you look at it, it's just yet another example of the student loan industry's callous disregard for borrowers and widespread sy systematic, systemic problems. All right. Here is one of the issues that I have with the whole idea of student loans. The people that are most in need of student loans are the disenfranchised trying to attain that american dream you get your college degree and you can get a good job and you need that good paying job so that you can pay back your student loans first and foremost and then secondly to have a decent life now when you have student loans and you can't find that good that decent paying job or in the case of what has been happening and people have been staying home from jobs and jobs have been closing down and such, and people have not been able to make their money to pay their student loans, they've gone into default. Now, the government has said, all right, we're going to put a hold on these um, collections and you're just going to go ahead and do it anyway? Come on, people. Something is seriously wrong with that. And... So what, what comes of it? Greetings and salutations. How are you? Greetings, greetings, greetings. Now, if, if this isn't a voice that has done <laughs> many things on, on the night shift with DJ Kevin Stew, I, I, I don't know which voice is. How are well, you, ma'am? I am doing fabulous, and it's been a while since I've tuned in, and I just so happen that I have the night off, as you might say, so mm -hmm. I just decided to chime in. Well, having financial background, having <laughs> had student loan background, as you said on the show before, having 
um i don't know you have so many irons in this in this in this mm-hmm. fire um, yes. <laughs> so just something to just say that just to put a uh um, just to debug a statement you just made about the american dream of having that college degree and getting that so-called and i'm doing the air quotes so-called good paying job so you can pay back that student loan mm-hmm. Ah, that's a lot of crock. Because I am, I'm going to say that I benefited from student loans to get my college degree because I was one of those people who decided to forego college right after high school. Mm-hmm. You know, life got in the way, had a family, and later in life, I decided to go back and get my college degree because it's always been a personal dream of mine. But hold on. Not necess- Wait. After high school and then family, aren't you leaving out something in the middle of that? Because you've, you've told us all that story. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, this, this is the one and only um, Althea S.U. Healing Heavenly Hands herself. Um, and um, Gioli Fitness Personal Training. So, and and we know that you are a U.S. Army veteran. Yes. Which happened after high school. Yes. Okay. So, it is after high school, then military, then college, then family. Or college and no. family. After high school, military, family, then college. Well, I said, yeah, that's why I said the second one, college and family. Oh, okay, okay. Right. So my experience is even pre-COVID. Right. And when I decided to go back to college to get my degree, um, little did I know that my... GI Bill had already expired because what the military doesn't tell you is, yeah, once you enroll, yes, you do get those benefits. However, Mm. after a certain amount of time, you are no longer able to use that GI Bill to go to college. Mm -hmm. I found that out the hard way. So long story short, it was always a dream of mine, not necessarily what anybody else wanted. It's always a dream of mine to have a college degree. So I did go back to college. I got some scholarships. I got some grants. However, because I did my degree 100% online, mm-hmm. I did not have the funds available to pay for that in order to get my degree. So in order to subsidize the remainder of the cost of my college tuition, I got, um, you know, I was offered student loans. Cool. So I went ahead and at the time it was offered to me, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a lot. Mm -hmm. But I took it the interest was interest rate was low for the first year. Now, being a working mother, working single mother with two kids mm-hmm. and other bills or whatever, I could only afford to repay a certain amount per month. What they don't tell you is that the interest rate that you get is not for the life of the loan. Mm-hmm. So, I did what I had to do. I got my degree, and w- w- for those out there who are listening, for you listeners who decide that they want to go to college and they're going to take student loans, you get between a six to nine month, if they call it forbearance. Mm-hmm before you have to start repaying that loan after you get your degree. So say, for instance, you decide to go back and get a bachelor's degree, which is normally a a four-year degree. 
Right. You can go ahead. You can get your degree. You don't have to worry about payments while you're getting your degree. However, after graduation, they, um, depending on who your lender is, you can have up to nine months before you start making your payments. What it could start after six. Yeah, it, it, yeah, between six and nine months after graduation that you could start paying that. And mm -hmm. you, they make it affordable up front. Right. Then Getting into carrot. year two. Yeah, going into year two of that loan, they can go in and they can rewrite that loan and... You can go from, and this is just um, a rough example. This is no way in any means by this is exactly what you got to pay. But say, for instance, your first year, you got a $20,000 loan that you got to pay back. Mm -hmm. $100 a month. Okay. Based on what your expenses are, that's not too much. Year two, that might jump up to $250. Okay, but does it stay there, though? No, it does not. Huh. But it gets better. And when I say better, I don't mean better. Because yeah, they can better tell for you, them. oh... Worse for us. Yes, better. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, I remember for me, I... Like I said, a single mother, two kids in school... I got to take care of my family, right? Oh, we can give you a six-month forbearance. And that forbearance is you don't have to make a payment during that six months. However, if you had 36 months to pay that loan back, they tack on that six months to the end. So it goes from 36 months now to 42 months. <laughs> Then, once you start to pay back that loan, they can recalculate the loan again, and they will be quick to offer you, the federal government will be quick to offer you a forbearance. And just so you know, these loans are not through the federal government. They resell these loans to private organizations. Right, which is so what these private they were here in yeah. this article. Right. These, these private organizations will pay the federal government their money, and now you're at the beck and call of these private organizations that can do whatever they want, and you are stuck with this debt. Mm. And notice I said this is pre-COVID. Right. Way pre-COVID. So I can just imagine what the individuals who have student loans are going through right now because I went through it when I didn't have a pandemic. I didn't have anything other than life mm -hmm. trying to repay this loan. Right. So what I had to do, I had to bite the bullet. And I am a person that if I make $100, I'm saving 75 of that. Mm -hmm. So I took out, um, I made a withdrawal from my retirement plan to pay this loan off because when I looked at it, now, remember I said it was about $20,000 Yeah. that I got the loan, that the amount that I owed for that, you know, for my, um, uh, from, from my, my, my college degree. Mm -hmm. You tell me within the space of 18 months, how did that jump from 20,000 to $28,000? What? And I was, I mean, I was making my payments, but because, and this is something that I did not have the education on, nobody, I, I, um, I didn't have the knowledge to research 
before I entered into the forbearance is, yeah, they'll tell you that you get that forbearance for six, nine, or 12 months, but guess what's happening to that balance that you owe during that time that you are not making those payments? Well, the interest is still accruing on it. Yes. So the interest is accruing on it and they can still rewrite the loan after the forbearance period. Yes. Yes. That's the way, crazy. Because I remember that it, when we talked about it, um, a few, like, it had to have been, it can't be more than two months ago. And I remember that part of it where the forbearance is it being in effect you know that that time is tacked on at the end but they were saying that the interest wasn't going to be tacked on also but traditionally that could happen that that could could happen happen. now in this time of of loan forgiveness or forbearance as a result of the situation that we're in right there shouldn't be any interest being accrued on it right now that is where uh, the people that are having the difficulty falls in. If they are with the federal government that offers these packages, mm-hmm. they should, and I'm not going to say that they are, they should be covered under these federal laws that are passed by the federal government that either um, you can get into a profession that if you satisfy whatever the qualifications are in a profession. And one of the professions when I got my student loan was if you got into some type of, um, say, for instance, a teacher or some type of nonprofit, Mm -hmm. your loan would be forgiven. But they made it so difficult for you to qualify for that program. Mm. That a lot of people, by the time that you get through, you got through with the application and the qualifications, a lot of people just, you know what, I can't be bothered with this, and they just gave up. Right. So, like I said, what I did was, whatever the balance was, I literally took a hardship withdrawal from my retirement plan just to pay it off. And I know that not everyone was as, is, as, is or was as fortunate as I was to have that backup plan, that, you know, that backup plan where mm-hmm. I had the money available. Right. But guess what I had to pay to pay that loan off? Almost $30,000. I was subjected to a 28% income tax. What? On Yes, because I took a withdrawal from my retirement plan and I was not at retirement age. 28% of whatever that balance was. Are you kidding me? So, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. And there's no recourse. There's no, there's, there's nothing in place that is going to say, all right, here, American citizen, here you go. Um, you, you went through to try to better yourself, to give back to the community. And we've seen where you have done so. Even better than that, American military veteran, you have done your time serving this country. Now you are going ahead and making yourself even better to serve in the community privately. And you're hit with this. Now, who is going to tell me that Things that happen in this country don't come as a way of money-making first. 
Who's going to tell me that? Yes, it's this all, is the country it's all where... all about the almighty dollar. Yeah, this is the country where you can make money. This is the country where you can ma- let your, your, your dreams can materialize. At what cost, though? Yeah. So, so. here it is. You, you, you did the military. You were in the military. And then you went and... and, and decided to get a college degree, ended up having to get a student loan. While get paying off the student loan, you then had to go back into your retirement to take out money so that you don't get hit with ridiculous interest um, fees on the student loan, only to be hit with ridiculous income tax charges because you pulled money from your retirement, taking a hardship withdrawal not just a regular yeah. withdrawal a hardship re- withdrawal so you had to go ahead and present information about this withdrawal and you still got hit with a 28 percent income tax charge yeah it's called um gosh what is it called again um capital gains you, because i took that money i took that money even though i had the paperwork showing not one penny went into my pocket. That money that I that money that I took from my retirement account, every single penny went to pay off that student loan. But it was still um, it, it still counted to me as income. It it's like I went in and I took twenty eight thousand dollars from my retirement plan. And I went ahead and splurged and just went shopping and bought me a car and bought clothes and bought... It was taxed as capital gains. So, you have to ask the question. Why go to college? No, no, no. Not why go to college. Why take out student loans? No. But if you can't afford to pay the student loan to go to college then you have to ask the question why am i going to college there are ways to get around it however i was not educated and i didn't took i should say i wasn't educated i didn't take the time to go through and find out because there are a lot of people i know a handful of people right now Mm -hmm. who have gotten doctorate degrees Mm -hmm. and didn't pay a penny out of pocket. I did not take the time to Mm. research to find ways that I could have gotten that done because student loan was offered to me and I was not given all of the information up front. And, you know, shame on me because I didn't take the time to research. And that is the reason why I'm calling in tonight for those out there who are thinking about going to college, I am not knocking college. My college degree was one of the greatest accomplishments in my life because I did a four-year degree in 28 months. Show Call off. me a glutton for punishment. <laughs> Call me a glutton for punishment. No, I'm not a show off. I just, you just it had was to that get it important done. to me. Yeah, I just had to get it done. And... I just went on that fast track, got it done, and I'm like, you know what? I'll take care of the consequences after. And I, I, I have my college duke, and I kept looking at it, and I was like, all right, this was worth it, and I am going to do what I have to do to pay this off. Mm-hmm. So, all right. I, 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 I will go back. And say, I stand corrected. It is not why I go to college. It is why I take out a student loan. I'm right there with you on that. Mm-hmm. When, and do note, yes, going to college, you can get your degree um, and, and not have to pay a cent out of pocket. There are grants that are available to you, which are, there, you know, grants are yeah. different, totally different from, from, from loans. Grants and scholarships. Yes. But, but it does take a lot of work on the part of the student. Yes. And there are scholarships out there and grants out there if you're a black female. 
That's all you need to do is be a black female and you qualify for these grants, but they don't advertise them. Mm -hmm. You just have to do your research. If you're a single mother, Mm -hmm. there are grants and scholarships out there. If you work for a specific organization, there are grants and scholarships out there. But you don't hear them being advertised every day to let these individuals who are interested know that, hey, listen, you can go and you can do this without having to take out a a penny in student loan. And you may have to pay an application fee for some of these um, grants and scholarships that you apply for. But it is minimal compared to what you would have to pay if you get a student loan. And they make the qualifications for these loans so ridiculous. And when I say ridiculous, I don't mean ridiculous as in difficult, ridiculously easy Mm -hmm. that you can qualify for these loans. But when it comes time to pay it back, it literally is impossible. Possible. So hold on. Let me. Uh, it's easy for you to get a student loan. Is it equally as easy to get one of the grants that are available? Yes, if you know where to go, how to apply. Mm. But they don't. They don't make this information readily available or easily available as they make it for. The student, the student loans. loans. Got you. You know, <laughs> these are the things, ladies and gentlemen, these are the things, the little things that make a big difference. Because this whole student loan thing, boy, it, it's a gotcha, gotcha. Because when they got you, they got you. They got you. Hey, hey, Dora, how are you doing? Greetings to those down there in Brazil. Uh, um, oh, I'm still on Facebook Live. Didn't even remember that. <laughs> but you know what? I just think that this is this is information that just needs to be out there, and from someone who's experienced it. Yeah. Definitely. I am just, you know, I, I'm always here to share my experiences whenever you discuss a topic that I've either personally experienced or I have information about. Yeah, but and, and, and this is one of them that um, <laughs> we don't talk about nearly enough in our communities because... There are so many children that have gone through middle school and high school without where else to go because they see that college bill and have no idea how to get it. So they decide, all right, let me see if I can get a little job first and work a little money and then start the ball rolling that way. And then they hear, oh, but there are student loans available. And since you're getting this kind of a degree, you know, you can get a job that pays this much money. Dangling that carrot. To repay that. Now, can I tell you that this country does not prepare students for this type of, um, inf- with, with any type of information? Because do you want to know when students find out about student loans? When I'm applying for college? During their um, junior year in high school. They have two years left in high school before they start getting any type of information about... They don't even know what it's going to cost to get a, get, get a college degree. But isn't that the parent's responsibility to let their children know about these things? But how can the parents let their ch- students n- let their children know if the if the information is not provided for the parents to pass that information along? 
well, I guess at that point, the parents are going to have to do some legwork. Yeah. So if the information is not readily available, but the information is available. We as right. parents have a responsibility to our children to share that information with them, to get that information, because to it, it benefits the us, the parents, also. If, if we have that information and, and we're discussing it with our children, Right. So they have it, we have it. We know exactly what is happening and we start down this journey, to, this, this path together. However, my personal opinion is this need, this discussion, mm -hmm. the information needs to be provided somewhere in middle school and the latest as a freshman in high school mm -hmm. because that will give the students and the parents adequate time to do that research and to get all of this information that I'm talking about right. ahead of time. Not when your child is halfway through their junior year, which just leaves them less than a year before they go to college. And I, I am so thankful that I, 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 am, I was not that parent that pressured my children into going to college. It was mm -hmm. their decision. Mm -hmm. And I did what I could, the research that I could, gave him and, and you know, provide him then with the support that I, I learned. Right. But I'm in the minority. I'm going to say about 90% of students who go to college mm -hmm. don't go to college because it's what they want. It's not what they desire. Or go to the college that they want or the college that they desire or even, even go after a major that they want. It's usually it, it, it's a, what the, the parents want. The parents are living vicariously through their children. Yes. And those parents don't take enough time to research and say, oh, well, you know what? I want my daughter or my, I want my daughter to be a lawyer. I want my son to be a doctor. They just have this tunnel vision that at the end of however many years that, um, that degree takes, this is the degree that my child is going to come, um, is going to come out of college with. Mm -hmm. The majority of those parents don't research to see what that degree is going to cost. And at the end of the four, five, or six years that it takes that child to get that degree, how that child is going to pay. You're going to repay that, yeah. Yeah, who's going to repay that debt? And a lot of these parents, once that child gets to a certain age, they're on their own. Once that child graduates from college, yep. that debt is going to belong to that child. And a lot of these young adults now, when they're starting out in life, they're starting out in life with a 50, 60, some of them even $150,000 in debt with a job that's only paying them fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year. So let's talk about that for a moment. <laughs> because you know when you when you when you put the whole thing together in bits and pieces as you go through each section of it you know it it it, it seems like its own thing but then you put everything together and you end up with that last bit that you said so you have a hundred thousand dollar student loan and a fifty thousand dollar paying job how that work so you start off well in the red mm -hmm. at what point do you dig out of that and this is probably why you have the, so yes you have a doctor in the family but this doctor is putting in ridiculous hours because they still need to earn a paycheck in order to cover First of all, this student loan. 
and to take care of themselves. And just so you know, um, for a lawyer and a doctor, mm -hmm. once they get out of law school and medical school, they go through the practice, they go through residency. Mm -hmm. Once they actually start working and making money, the first four to six years that they're actually working mm -hmm. and making a living, um, you know, make, make, making a living from that profession that they got the degree in, yeah. whatever they make is going back to repay that student loan. And this is not, this does not take into consideration that they have a practice that they have to pay for, 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 for doctors. Yeah, well, if, once you get into private practice, you, you, you're also talking about things that they need to put in yeah. place to cover themselves. You know, yes, um, malpractice insurance. Right. You know, attorneys. There's so many legal um, uh, legal fees that they have to pay. There's so many associations that they have to belong to. Mm -hmm. All of that. Plus, if they if they decided if they decide that they want to start a family, oh. they still have to they still have to eat. Yep. They still have to pay for pay rent or a mortgage. They they have to drive a fairly decent vehicle if they decide that they want to get married and have kids they have to pay for that plus all of their professional associations and everything that they have to pay for just to maintain their license to be able to practice that profession right plus $150,000 student loan. <laughs> the first four to six years that they're working, that is all they are paying. And then you and I, we have to go to a doctor. Yeah. Some of that cost is going to end up being passed on to us. The majority, the majority of it is going to pa be passed on to the patients. God forbid you and I should get into a legal matter, you know, a legal issue that we have to go to an attorney because we're, we're not qualified. We don't know about, you know, a lot about legal, about, about the, the, um, the legalities or certain things in this country, the legal yeah. system. Yeah. So, which is twisted in and of itself. But oh, Lord Jesus, no, that's a whole other show. Yeah, let's not go there. So... We, as consumers, are going to be like, oh, my God, this attorney's charging me $250 an hour because. No, it's not because they don't have a choice. Because they, it's either that or they go into bankruptcy. You know, that, that, that takes me to something else. So we, we started off talking about how... Um, student loans, those in default are, even with, with the government saying, yo, hey, let's put a, a little stop on these collections. Them still having their um, wages garnered and such. So we have kind of gone off on a tangent, which is a necessary tangent to go off on. Get this. I digress. Based, based, based on even the story that we have created and have been building on. So now you have this professional, whether lawyer, doctor, Indian chief, whomever, this professional that has done their time to earn their degree and set up their business, they still have this loan, the student loan to pay for, as well as other fees. So now they're passing on some of this cost to their clientele. To the consumer, yeah. Now, individuals that are coming into their practice for their services they may also be business owners or professionals in a field that charge other people things. 
some of these same doctors <coughs> and lawyers and whomever else are coming to these individuals for services and are getting discounts because they are lawyers and doctors and whomever else. I don't know if you have noticed that as a thing. Basically, what I'm saying without adding all the fluff to it is, listen, when people provide a service, if they are the, the, the delivery person that is bringing your food or they're the service person at your favorite restaurant, whomever it is, when they're delivering a service, if it is their private service and they give you a fee, take that fee or leave it. Don't ball them down about it. Yeah. Don't cry them down because you think that it is not what they are deserving. One of the things as a DJ that I have come to, it is very seldom that I give someone my price and it's very rare that I actually play out at events. But when I give someone my price, I very seldom not hear. So could you take something off of that? Not necessarily being said that way, but that's basically what it boils down to. Yeah. And it's, it's any, it's any professional, you know, and, and not discounting what you do, mm -hmm. but anyone who provides a service, every time that you present your price mm -hmm. to someone, that consumer does not take into consideration what your overhead is, what your expenses are. All they're looking at is you as a DJ going to play a birthday party. You're going to be there for between two and four hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have to, con you have to, when, when you present a price, I'm not even sure what falls into that category that you have to recoup that money in order to take care of your expenses. Mm -hmm. Because when you present a price to a consumer, all they're looking at is, you know what, DJ Kevin Stew is playing my mom's 80th birthday party, and this is a monumentous occasion, and he's charging me $300 for that four hours. Man, that's a lot of money. Mm. They don't take into consideration that you have equipment maintenance, mm -hmm. you have to provide gas to get to that, to that event, Mm -hmm. you have to not, not, not to mention your time that you have to take to go ahead and they're going to give you uh, uh, a list what you call it um, a playlist a playlist their, their favorites well, their favorites let me let me let me let me I can I can just really break it down to you real quick that three hour event or that four hour event that is just the time where you have slotted for that event there's a time before that for setup and a time after that for breakdown yeah that is not even considered so whatever what? time what? off the bat whatever time that it is that you're you're saying that you want you're talking about two hours added on to that mm -hmm. plus the preparation time that yeah. you have to do to get all of this Whatever it is that you, they I'm want. Sure. Yeah, you just don't show up. Yeah, you just don't show up and go, all right, right. let me see. Blah, blah, blah. People don't take that into consideration that when you are, when you're paying, when, when someone ch who provides a service, mm -hmm. they're charging you. People's time is worth money. Exactly. And if you're, if you're going to ask someone, if you're going to, hire someone to provide you a service you're going to have to pay for it because you can't do it yourself exactly. therefore you have to pay the professional yeah. what they're worth and to I've, provide had to, that service. I've had to say it 
I ever had to say it to someone recently. Um, I got a call. There was one of the cities um, nearby was having an event. They're doing something at this event. And their argument was, yeah, you're not coming to DJ. Just, to, just have some music play in the background for about three hours. And I want to give you $150 for it. And I told them, no, I'm not doing it. I don't, why? I don't care. I don't care if it is, is uh, whatever city it is that this event is, is happening at. I'm, I'm not doing it. You, you want my equipment. You want my time. And me as a DJ, you're going to say, uh, we don't want you to play to DJ. Just play some music. What? How does that work? That's like going to a doctor and saying, you know, I don't really want you to diagnose me. Well, just give me some medication for this, what, that, what I'm dealing with. What, did, what, what does a DJ do? Excuse me. Right, but play music. Although um, this DJ does more than play music. Um, yeah, but, <laughs> and you also have to play the right type of music. Can you just show up to an, an, an 80-year-old party? And play, <laughs> yeah, playing vulgar music, playing music for a 20-year-old party. No, you have to take your time. Right. Okay. You know, and, and I'm not, I use DJ as, a, as an example, but we're not limiting it to DJs. We're no, talking about anybody just, in the service industry at, at all. Wherever it is that you go, you go to a, a mechanic, you ask for a food service, you call up uh, or, or go to the app for a ride share service or a food service delivery, whatever it is, understand that these people that are in business are in business to make money also. So you go to work and you put in your, your, your work time, you expect to get paid. And if you yes. do extra, you expect to get paid extra. Now, granted, th many of us that, that work nine to five don't get what we deserve in this nine to five. Right? None of us do. Yeah. So if you have a business, <laughs> that doesn't mean that. And, and, and I, I don't believe anybody really sets up their price list to gouge out anybody's pockets. There's, I, I, the I think they're, they're, they're trying to be reasonable enough to be competitive in the market, in whatever industry they're in, as well as to cover their expenses and to right. give a little something because everybody's in business and to make a profit at the end of the day you're providing a service it still does not negate the fact that you have expenses yes that this service needs the service that you're providing needs to cover right at the end of the day you still have to put gas in your vehicle at the end of the day, you still have to pay. You're in this profession to cover your day-to-day -day expenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're not out there offering your service. I wish I could offer my services and not be compensated for it. You mean for free? <laughs> yeah. I've learned that there's no such thing as free. No, there's no such thing as free. So, I know we went off on a tangent, but it all ties into the statement that you made at the beginning of this discussion is you go to college, you expect to get a degree to propel you into that good paying job, mm -hmm. which, do you know what the acronym for J-O-B is? <laughs> Break it down for me. Just over broke. Yep. That sounds, like, that sounds just about right. When somebody told me about this, I was like, oh, no, I, gotta, I, I have to develop a system where... I am my own boss. Right. You know, I, I, have to, I have to 
go into a profession where I am not going to work for somebody, where I'm selling my time to that person because they will never, ever pay me. The value of it. The, my, my time, what they pay me for my time, mm-hmm. it's not enough to cover the expenses that I put into I- making their system, their job work for themselves. So you see a lot of entrepreneurs out there. Mm-hmm. And I commend them and my hat goes off to them because you know what? They're not out there working nine to five, knowing good and well that they're worth a hundred, their, their time and, and what they put into and the, the amount of time and energy and commitment that they put into this, this other person's to, to, to build their business. Mm-hmm. is worth $150,000. Yeah. What does that company turn around and pay them? Yeah. One third of that. People hear somebody making $50,000 a year, and they think that's a lot of money. They're just, they're just the making ta- it. By the time they're done paying that student loan that they got for that, for, for, for that, that bachelor's degree or that master's degree, and yeah, they may have a PhD making a hundred thousand dollars a year, mm-hmm. but they also have a hundred and fifty thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollar debt that yeah. has to be repaid out of that. And this is not what they take home. Yeah, yeah. That and right then now. the federal government, the federal government is going to say, oh. We're, we're, we're going to suspend your payments for X amount of months. And then they don't and do then, it. They don't honor it. And then, it. Number, number one, they don't honor it. And number two, if they do honor it, they're going to rewrite that loan. And pre-COVID, you were paying $250 a month. You got a forbearance for 12 months. Meaning that for that 12 months, you don't make a loan payment. However, if your loan is at anywhere between 6 and 12% interest, that is being accrued on a monthly basis that is being tacked on to whatever the balance of that loan is. And, and, and it's not, when, when, when the forbearance like is over... It when the forbearance may is over, be it may move from that six percent to probably fifteen, twenty percent. What and whoever is is wh- wh- whomever has bought that loan, because you have companies out there that they will buy your loan. A pr- you the private companies, yeah, will buy your loan. And once it goes to a private individual, that's it. They can charge up to twenty five percent interest. Mm-hmm. But you don't hear that being in the advertisement. Nobody gets out there and say, you know what? If you don't, if if you take a forbearance. And you don't pay a loan payment for 12 months. At the end of this forbearance, this is what could happen. They may start off as federal student loans, but they don't always end up like that. So let me, let me, let me reel this back just a little bit. Um, before I do so, let me quickly say... Thank you to, I went through, I'm, I'm into my third segment right now. I just went through um, the segment sponsored by Althea and her Healing Heavenly Hands. Thank you, Althea, um, who happens to be on the line with us right now. Althea is, is a licensed massage therapist for over 20 years. She comes to you bringing her table, her oils, and her Healing Heavenly Hands. 
and uh, just give her a call, 954-655-9000. She operates out of Broad County, North Miami, Dade, South, South Palm Beach counties. Uh, again, she comes to you, 954-655-9000, 954-655-9000. And outside of paying her, she, she only re requests that you get off her table and go sleep somewhere else when she's done, because like me, you'll probably fall asleep. So thank you, Althea. Thank you very much for sponsoring uh, the second segment of the broadcast. And, uh, oh, Althea is also a personal trainer, a certified personal trainer. So um, you, she'll put your muscles in pain and she'll soothe them also. <laughs> and thank you to Reggae Global Entertainment. Reggae Global will act as your booking agent and your tour management, business registration, legal service referrals, music production, marketing and promotion, and so much more. Give them a call, 954-804-8199. That's 954-804-8199. Call them or visit them online, reggaeglobalentertainment.com. Tell them you heard about them on a the night shift with DJ Kevin Stew. And uh, this is the Reggae Global segment that we're currently in. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. Um, Reggae Global and to you to Althea who is on the line with us talking about her experience with student loans and the federal government <laughs> <laughs> wow um, oh. according to this article I'm going to keep you on with me for until we get into musical therapy if you don't mind that's fine no so, not at all you know I like to put my, my three cents in well since you can afford three cents I, I'll take it <laughs> now because because I bec because I became a massage therapist and a personal trainer, I can afford the three cents. Okay, that works. That works. <laughs> so, what they're saying is, according to this article on MSN.com, challenges turning off debt collection exist. The documents are the latest indication of the challenges of the government. Uh, the government has faced temporarily shutting off the student loan debt collection system. Last year, after Congress paused student loan payments and collections as a part of the CARES Act, thousands of borrowers were still having their wages seized nearly six months later. Now, the borrowers who are the focus of the data that was released this week were not part of the group because... At the time, they were not eligible for corona, coronavirus era student loan relief. Despite having federal student loans, borrowers with commercially held FFEL loans are often left out of many of the benefits of the student loan program, including public service loan forgiveness, which allows public servants who have made at least 10 years worth of payments to have their debt canceled. You, you, we were talking about this earlier working in a particular industry, um, doing certain jobs. Here it is, after going to college and earning your degree, you now have to work in this industry for 10 years to be able to have your, your, your um, loan forgiven or your debt cancelled. But the struggle to even get to that point, most people don't make it 10 years in one job. And in addition to that, to get through the paperwork to say, hey, I have done what is required of me. Now, forgive this debt. Now, of course, they're going to get their money out of it. So after 10 years at whatever interest, that, that principle would have been covered. And some. For months, borrowers and advocates urged the department to include these borrowers in the coronavirus relief measures. Last March, the agency said that borrowers with commercially held FFEL loans who defaulted on their debt would be eligible for the pause on payments and collections. At the time, Department of Education officials explained that they had more leeway to take action for de defaulted borrowers because once a borrower defaults a commercially held loan, the Department of Education makes a payment to the lender for its losses through a guarantee agency. The middlemen that provide insurance on these loans for lenders and also collect on them. Whereas when a borrower with a commercially held FFEL loan 
in repayment, the private lender still owns the debt. So that they're explaining a little bit about the difference between the federal and the private loans. <clears throat> now, for decades, the bulk of the of federal stu student loans were made in a particular way. They were issued by a private lender, issued by a guarantee agency, and backed by the government. But in 2010, the government ended this program and, and, and started lending exclusively to borrowers directly. Nonetheless, guarantee agencies maintain a role in the student loan system, servicing and collecting some of the loans that are still outstanding from the legacy program. So this is prior to, the, to 2010. Uh, this was kind of what you got involved in, right, Althea? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? That you were a part of the legacy program, which was prior to 2010. Yes, and one of the things that I want to say, um, just, to, just to piggyback on what um, one of the statements you just made is, mm -hmm. for some of the loans that when you enter into these student loans and they tell you that, if you enter into a certain profession, that the loan will be forgiven. Mm -hmm. Under no circumstances do they tell you that you have to be in this profession for X amount of years and you have to make payments for X amount of years right. before the remainder, not the entire debt, before the remainder of that debt is forgiven. You mm. want to know when you find out about that? After you've already entered into this debt, mm -hmm. and then they're going to tell you, oh, if you become a teacher, you have to stay in this profession for X amount of years. You have to make payments for X amount of years. And if the balance that you owe after X amount of years, you still have to go through the system to get that debt forgiven. Right. None of this is none of this information is given to you up front. It 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 it, it sounds it sounds real pretty, you know, but as the old adage goes, not everything that glitters is gold. It's the okie doke. They got you. Yeah, and th that is it right there. The gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So here it is, and you know, I'm 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 gonna jump off of this right here, ladies and gentlemen. You can go, you can find this 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 what we're talking about right now on um, MSN.com, and the article is about student loan borrowers that have had thirty-seven million dollars in wages unfairly garnished. Thirty-seven million dollars, and this is probably why the rich during this period of lockdowns are still getting rich because things like these are happening. It is the rich that are lending the money that that that, that can back some of these loans. So if people are still their wages are still being garnished, then naturally, they're still going to be making money. There are some you know, individuals in some industries that that is exactly how they position themselves. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, if, if it is a federally backed student loan, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean that you're repaying that loan to the federal government. However, mm -hmm. Because it is a federally backed program, the federal government can come in and all they have to do is issue a writ of garnishment to your financial institution. And, you know, the banks, uh, I am going to say this, mm -hmm. but the banks are not the bad guys in this situation, whenever a bank get a writ of garnishment, especially from the federal government, 
their hands are tied. They they have to. It's not that they can, uh, you know, maybe I don't want to do this because I know this person's right. financial situation or whatever. They must. They must comply. They must comply with every single word of that order. So people are going to walk into their banks and they're going to yell at their banker and how can you do this and how can you withhold my money? The banks in this case do not have a choice. Hmm. Listen, people. I'm a former banker, so I know that, and I've been yelled at many, many times. Is how can you put this hold on my account when you know I don't have the money? When 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 banks who are federally regulated mm -hmm. get a rid of garnishment from the federal government, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Not more that's that they can do. Nothing else other than to comply with every single word of whatever that that garnishment says. Listen, I'm I'm this initially I, I I just had to bring this to light for those that probably were not aware of it. You know, this, this information is not that old. I'm talking like just a few hours old on MSN.com. So you can just go to MSN.com and, and, and you'll find it there. Look on yeah. the finance, under the finance section, the money section and, and personal money. You know, you know I, and the thing is that, that what you're saying is this information was just published. Yeah. But I went through this, not just last year, not just the year before. We're talking about seven, eight, uh, this is what, 2021? Uh, yeah, between eight and ten years ago. All right. And everything that you have said that was mentioned in this article, mm -hmm. it's still going on. It's not like they just up and changed the things overnight it's been going on prior that's sad though yeah it really is but it, it goes to show that a lot of what happens in the united states is driven by money mm -hmm. the almighty dollar and when i say a lot i mean a lot I I and I I have been telling people the story of how I I lost the friendship talking about this current situation and my position on it. You know, these things happen in real life. And if you're not paying attention to the information that is out there and you're not in the information sometimes over a given period of time, you won't notice some of the changes that have happened. When you just go with whatever you're told, that's okay. a problem. When you're not asking yeah. additional questions and seeking additional information, that's a problem. You're going to say something. No, I was going to say, I just want to share another personal story between, um, you know, about my children. Mm -hmm. um, when my oldest daughter went to college, I did not, all the information that I just shared, I did not have mm. all of that information readily available when she started college. It wasn't until she started going through and... um. Having some my of the experiences. Daughter, yeah, having some of the experiences. Now, when my second daughter got ready to go to college, yeah, she already had all of this information. And she took a different route. 
And mm. she was like, wait a second. I'm not going to go away to college. Mm-hmm. Because if I go away to college, I'm going to have to pay this, this, and this, and this. But, you but know, if I if I stay home and I go to college, then and I apply for this grant and this grant and this grant, this is a grant. I don't have to pay grants back. If I apply for this scholarship and this scholarship and this scholarship, I don't have to pay any of it back. And I wish they would push grants and scholarships ninety percent more than they would push student loans because there is so much money out there for grants and scholarship that I'm going to, I'm going to say a ridiculously high amount. 85% of students do not have to apply for student loans because there are so many private organizations. There are so many public organizations out there that have money. You want to know what happens to organizations or what kind of a tax break that corporations get when they give away money? Yeah, it's the it's tax they get a lot of, a lot of breaks. Ridiculous. Yeah. They have the money out there available, but it's not advertised. Well, I, I guess that's on them too because they're missing out on 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 the credits, the tax credits that they can get because yeah, they are, but, they're not advertising but, that they have these available. No, they are advertising it. However, it, the advertisement that they're doing is not getting to us, the consumers, to us, the parents who have the kids that are entering into college. And I am going to put myself in that number that Mm -hmm. I did not in the beginning Mm -hmm. excuse me I did not take the initiative to go out there and investigate and search for free money and that's grants and scholarships that's free money yeah and For every single parent who has a child in school right now, I'm not even going to say high school, start, if you plan for your child to go to college or if your child has expressed the interest in going to college, I don't care if they're in kindergarten or the 12th grade, Mm -hmm. start helping them to search for scholars, for grants and scholarships. Right. Because you don't have to take out a student loan for your child to get a degree. Because if you do, I can guarantee you that if you as the parent are not going to pay that loan back, you are doing a disservice to your child because when they leave college, they're already going to be behind the eight ball. Stuck in debt. They're going to be so far in debt. And I'm going to say about maybe 5% of them who graduate in that degree is going to get a job that pays them enough to a to be able to pay that loan off in ten years, you know that's an. Do you know joke. how much inter- Do you know how much interest that is over ten years? Yeah, that's in, that's enough for them to make a down payment on a house. But that's just that you know, is, that's 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 that's, that's the other part of it. <laughs> You're you. It's a perpetual cycle. Yeah. And you. How many people out there actually went and got their degrees and are working in the field that they got their degrees in? 5%. So are they making the money that they could make working in a field of their degrees? Probably not. Probably not. 
And I'm not saying that some aren't making more than what someone in their their because there are some jobs that just ask you, do you have a degree? And I don't care what degree you have. I just want to know that you went to college for a few years mm-hmm. yeah. and completed uh, the degree program. That's, that's all that is required. Anyway, people, information is out there. Go look for it. Look up your look for your grants. Look for your scholarships. Look what is available in your community. Those those businesses, those entities that are offering these grants and scholarships. Consider this. Advertise in one, just one, disenfranchised community, and see the kind of response that you get. And when I say advertise, I don't mean just drop some flyers. Educate the people in that community yeah. about what using this program this grant or this scholarship to get a college degree what it could possibly mean for that individual and i say individual because it's not just the children in the community there are some adults in the community too that could benefit greatly and should benefit greatly see what happens to that community do you want to know what a lot of the, 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 well, the scholarships, I'm not really sure about the grants because um, I'm not really sure what the procedures are to apply for grants. But scholarships, the mm-hmm. majority of them, do you know what you have to do to qualify for the majority of the scholarships out there? What's that? Write an essay. 500 words or more? Twelve hundred word. It uh, it and they will they will tell you that the they the scholarships are so specific that if you don't understand, it will walk up and slap you upside the head. Like, oh, this is all I got to do to qualify for the scholarship. Right. A fifteen hundred dollar scholarship. Fifteen hundred or fifteen thousand. No, a fifteen hundred dollar scholarship. You may have to apply for three or four fifteen hundred dollar scholarship to pay for one class. If you got to write a five thousand word essay, isn't that worth it? Where you, you, it just takes your time to sit down, and they will ask, they will specify what you need to write in this essay to be able to qualify for this scholarship. Yeah, granted, it's not a fifteen thousand dollar scholarship. Mm-hmm. But it's fifteen hundred dollars that you don't have to pay back. That you don't have to pay back, and there are so many of them out there. I, I think what a lot of people do is look for the big dollar amounts, mm-hmm. and those are far and few between. Right. So if they don't find those, but they the, think that there's nothing available. That there's nothing else available. You have mm. the fifth. You have the thousand dollars. You have the fifteen hundred dollars. You have the five thousand dollars. You have so many and things, just like you said, it's money that you don't have to pay back. Isn't it worth your time? Definitely. To go ahead and apply for these scholarships? Grants are a little bit more. You may have to do a little bit work, but isn't it worth it where your child can go to college Debt free. They can graduate college debt free mm-hmm. with a degree. So even if they don't get a job in that field right out of college, they don't have anything to worry about because their college tuition is paid for. I, I wanna I wanna change this narrative just a little bit and not just say you. your child, but you and you or your child. And thank you. Thank you. I, yeah, I kind of like got off into, yeah. Yeah, because but typically that's how we myself. look at it. We look at our children yeah. going to college yeah. and, and not looking at ourselves. Some, 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 some of us uh, have not gone to college, maybe successful in our fields or whatever, and just feel that there is a little bit more that you could do or that something else that is missing and it may be a college degree. And you decide that you want to go to college because you're never too old to do a college course. Oh, no, 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 no. So, I am still going 
I'm still looking to go for my for 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 for, for my graduate degree. See? So, you know, <sighs> The information that we we're, we're talking about tonight is not just for our children. Just for you know, it's not. It's for thank, everybody thank, in the thank community. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for getting my mindset off of the children and putting it on the community. Because yeah. the moment you stop learning, you stop growing. Anything that not growing is dead. There you go. So let me let me even put this out there for those that don't realize it. You think of a community of highly educated individuals versus a community with 10% educated. Think of how that community looks. Think of how that community operates. And then you decide where you want to go. Think of the disservice that they're doing to themselves by not going for the opportunities that are available. I'm going to leave it right there. Althea, thank you very much for helping to shape this particular broadcast tonight. Once again, I, I do apologize for Carl, Carl Boston not being able to join us tonight. She had a family emergency that, that took her away last minute. And we're... Oh, this, oh I, I just thought that this was the, the topic. Oh, I didn't even realize you had to see. I'm glad I called in. And to my biggest fan out there. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> much respect. <laughs> much love. Uh, we're going to do a little musical therapy. I, I thank you all for the support. Thank you for the love. Still encouraging you all to share, share, share. Call a friend, tell a friend, friends of your friends, friends of your enemies, enemies of your friends, and your enemies too, because we're not leaving anybody out. The Night Shift to DJ Kevin well, Stew, where you're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment on kevinstew.com. This is where we're at. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we're all, 10 p.m. We're inclusive. Yes. We're all inclusive. We're not leaving anybody yeah. out. Uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. For the Night Shift to DJ Kevin Stew, remember tomorrow it's Healthy Love Night. Uh, join us. Certain things, some things coming up in the near future. I'll I'll tell you this right now. Um, is that is the fourteenth next Tuesday. There will be no night shift. I'll tell you from now. Some of you might remember the Taking Innocence project. I I had the executive director for the the document series um documentary series that has been put together they're officially doing the launch next tuesday and wow, finally yes and representing the night shift uh, kevin um i'll be at that event and that happens at St. Thomas University in Miami, Miami, Florida. So that's the Taking Innocence premiere and launch. I, I, have, I have it shared on my social media pages. You, if you don't follow me on social media, you can check me out at DJ Kevin Stew on Instagram. You can follow the Night Shift to DJ Kevin Stew on Facebook. You can follow DJ Dash Kevin Stew on facebook once you tell you what let me make it simple for you go to kevinstew.com at the top of the site you will see links to all my social media platforms just use them they'll take you there just go to kevinstew.com althea once again i thank you Did I, okay i thought i lost you Yes. 
uh you take care have a good night we're gonna go into some musical therapy those of you on facebook live thank you so for the support thank you for sharing um there there are a few people that have religiously shared every time that i have gone live thank you thank you thank you the the love is is there i i feel it truly i appreciate love each and every one hubert much love bridging much love um good night everyone thank you all so much for tuning in and you know as always when you come to when when you tune into the night shift we don't just get on the air and just talk 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 mm-hmm. talk we do provide information yes and you know and it's always valuable information that every single individual who tunes in can benefit from so on behalf of DJ Kevin Stew and the night shift I personally want to thank you all for your support. I could not have said it better myself. We're going to take a quick little break and come back. We're going to jump into a little bit of musical therapy. We'll be right back. Good night, everyone. Quincy Media Group, innovative streaming and recording, has done it again. A new way to get your business in full view of your neighborhood consumer through AdShare TV. It's available in your neighborhood today. It's easy. Just call us. 754-999-6020. Become a host today and place a TV monitor in a strategic location so it's easy to see. Get a one-minute video ad or longer that plays anywhere in our network. Can't be a host? No problem. For a few dollars, we'll run your 30-second video ad. A host can run announcement specials like buy one get one free or discount ads. Let's turn your flyers into a 30 second video with music or a voiceover or let us create and run your video ad with a spokesperson. Take advantage of our early enrollment discount. Join us today. Your ad will be seen at least 30 times per day in your AdShare TV neighborhood. It's easy. Just call us 754-999-6020. AdShare TV, part of Pulse Media Group. It takes a village to raise a child. Hello, I'm Paul Campbell, here to talk about PASP, Peace and Love Academic Scholarship. This nonprofit group supports students facing serious obstacles from entering or continuing their studies, not because the grades are failing, but due to the lack of financial support. Over the past eight years, PALIS has awarded 600 scholarships valued at approximately 50.3 million Jamaican dollars or 415,000 US dollars. Together, we must build a better future for our children. Please visit www.palace1.org and make your donation to brighten the future of a deserving child. Palace Preserving young minds for posterity. Making great music is one thing, sharing it with the world, that's another. Let the professionals at Reggae Global Entertainment help you to another level. Specializing in artist management, booking, public relations and marketing, and promotion. Reggae Global Entertainment can help you with event planning, websites, photography, and video production, press releases, legal services, and graphic design. They can even help you with music production so you can get the sound that you want every time. Call Reggae Global Entertainment at 954-804-8199. That's 804-8199. Or visit them online at reggaeglobalentertainment.com. Yes, my people. Check out I Red Funks on Reggae Global Radio every Saturday at 8 p.m. with Kev Stew, where I'll give you a pre-life. Brand new. Good for you. Kick it like a ball if it was your dance hall. You hear that? It's Christine representing for DJ Kevin. You see me, I say, I don't know the boss. You see me, I say, DJ Kevin's too. And the night shift radio show, yo, it at the thing, turn up the thing loud. Whoa, DJ Kevin's too, at the heart of a champion. 
Never underestimate just chosen. The silver line, the end of the clouds. DJ Kevin's to believe in, and that's no doubt. Salute the match if we're the show, Christine. Just a hot it up. Loud. An abbreviated musical therapy tonight. This is the sound of Cesar. The track is called Morning in Gideon. Son of West Rock. The slum. Now I'm seeing the rising sun. New music from it's called Born as a Winner. The richest kind done, cause I'm a winner. I was born as a star. I don't need no one. Tell me who I am. Many try to tear me down. They want to see me on the ground. But each time they set their trap. They just push me further to the top Cause I'm a winner I was born as a star I don't need no one To tell me who I am I'm a winner I was born as a star I don't need no one To tell me who I am Let me tell you about my life Long before my kids and wife How I grew from rocks to riches Didn't come by sudden flight I had to burn the midnight lamp When my friends and my foes them around Education my mom used to say So sad she had passed away I had to push myself through school One shirt, one pants and shoes Now the rest is history I'm all that a man can be Cause I'm a winner I was born as a star I don't need no one To tell me who I'm Best believe I'm a winner Yes, I'm a winner I was born as a star Don't worry, you know I recognize all the winners around me To tell me who I am 
Because our mythological creatures of similar plumage are glued in it. If you're not a winner too, I know you won't be hanging around me too long. Just push me further to the top Cause I'm a winner I was born as a star I don't need no one To tell me who I am I'm a winner I was born as a star I don't need no one Send up your sweet perfume Focus, focus Now you're in the cute little dress that I love Six minutes at the top of the hour Don't lose focus Before I'm about to show Let's see if we can work, work some magic up in here Magic oh, Son of Lee Kelly I'll snap up a finger, girl I'll perform a trick on you Anything you want me to do I can do magic I'm a trick or two, mm, baby Cause I can do, I can do magic mm, I ain't no psychic But I know just what you need, girl You don't have to write it Just looking at your body I can't read, yeah Ooh, You're giving me the eye And it's making me want you bad, girl Bedroom mood rhythm. Track is called Magic. I can do magic. I make your home disappear. I don't know where to rule This is something you should, you should know One snap of a finger, girl I'll perform a trick on you Anything you want me to do When I fell in love You only hear my voice and it was right So good to believe This is Mr. Goose Pimples himself Said it on. His voice gives goose pimples. It's the Ian sweetness of the new edition rhythm. Check his call, she fell in love. Fit. 
saying I want to take you, take you in my arms. support. Thank you, Althea, for sharing your story with us. Of you, that's all this is on a GMAC closing out on the night shift to DJ Kevin Stew, Community and Finance Night. Here's a rendition of Kissing You. I also want to say thank you to McNeil Trucking for sponsoring the musical therapy segment. Much love to you. With McNeil Trucking, you're in good hands. They take care of your removal needs. Give them a call, 954-406-9740. Tell them you heard about them on a night shift to DJ Kevin Stew, yeah? As we close out, thanks to the affiliates. One Harmony Radio, the Foundation Radio Network, um, NIE Radio, Island Worldwide, PEMG TV, WGLRO, Aliwap Radio, Dusik Media Groups. Much love to you. Remember to look out for members of your community. Your community is not just a development that you live in, but it spreads far and wide. Whether you walk, ride, or drive, take the bus, the plane, the boat, or the train. People you pass along the way, these are members of your community. Do something good for one of them today because you never know who's going to do something good for you tomorrow. My name is DJ Kevin Stewart, so I like to do it to you, for you, and with you. Every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, 10 p.m. Eastern, KevinStew.com. Y'all take care until... Good morning, good afternoon, good day to you wherever you are in the world. Come right here in South Florida. I bid you all a good night. Greetings and salutations, one and all. You're invited to tune in to the night shift with DJ Kevin Stew. It airs on Mondays with Community and Finance, Tuesdays with Healthy Love, and Wednesdays with Real Talk from 10 p.m. to midnight Eastern Time. Come spend some time interacting in the stew pot where we keep things bubbling and wind down in musical therapy. The night shift with DJ Kevin Stew is on kevinstew.com where you're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment.